What's up everyone, this is Ed Talenti. how are you guys doing? Today we're finally shooting a video that I've had so many requests for and I am super stoked to do this one. It's 808 glides, how to do 808 glides. What I wanna do today, I'm gonna show you three methods that I use, um, they're all pretty different to achieve like different sounds, different results, uh, but I use all three of them or sometimes I use a combination of two or more of them. So yeah, they should be really useful. Also, I'm working in Ableton for this video, but basically everything that I'm saying can be applied to any DAW. Like for example, if I use Simpler or Sampler in Ableton, uh, it would be EXS24 in Logic, and it would be, I think it's called Edison in FL Studio. So yeah, it's just a matter of using like a different plugin, but the concept is the same. The technique is pretty much the same. It's just a matter of finding the buttons. Before we get into the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell. I'm posting a lot of videos. I'm being consistent every week. 2019, Ed Talenti, let's get it. All right, that's enough talking. Let's get to the video. Here we go. All right, so the very first thing you want to keep in mind when doing 808 glides is that it's better to have a long sound. Now, sometimes for particular effects, particular things, you can use like a short 808, um, but generally you want a long sound. So for the purpose of today's video, we're going to use an 808 from a Cody sample pack, which maybe I'll leave a link in the description because it's a dope sample pack. So shout out to Cody. He's dope. So we're going to use this Cody 808 number three, which sounds like this. So let's get going with the first method that I want to talk about. This is the simpler method. When I say simpler, I don't mean easier. I mean simpler, it's a plugin in Ableton that it's a simple sampler. That's why they called it simpler. Clever. So the first thing we want to do is pull up our simpler, put it in here and load up the 808 that we want to use. I put some saturation on it just to get a little beefier. So it sounds like this. So now that we have our 808, uh, we want to go mess with a, a few of the settings here. Again, this is like specific to Simpler in this case, but you can do the same thing on any DAW. It's just the buttons are going to be in a different order in a different place, but the things are the same. So the first thing you want to look for is the thing called voices, uh, which in Ableton is right down here. Right now it's set at six, so I can press up to six notes and they're all going to go at the same time, which sounds amazing. <laughs> so what we want for glides, because we want one note, to you know, cut off when the other one hits, basically. So we want to set this number to one. So now, if I press one note and then I press another one at the same time, the first one cuts off and it's and it goes directly to the second one. So that's the first thing. The second thing we want to do is go into the little control panel here and find our glide settings. We want to turn those on. Now there's two settings for this one. So the first setting is portamento. What that does is basically it triggers the note when you hit it, like when you hit the second note of the glide, it triggers the second note, but it makes it kind of like swell up. So the first note, it's like normal. The second note that you hit after is going to hit, but it's going to like rise up to that note. I'm going to give you an example. So I like to set my time around like 160 milliseconds. I think that's usually pretty good for me. So look what's going to happen when I press the note. So as you can hear, when I press the second note, instead of going ba, right away it went wah, right? And the higher you put this number, the longer that thing is. So if I do it like super long, I'm gonna do it like one second, one, 126. See what I'm saying? So that's what it does. That's why you need a long sound too, because otherwise it's gonna cut off before you can even get to the actual note. The second setting that we have is glide. So the difference between glide and portamento is that glide uh, doesn't necessarily trigger the beginning of the second note, it just makes the two notes kind of blend together and like kind of swell into each other. I'm going to give you an example again. So you're not going to hear the attack of the second one. You're only going to hear the attack of the first one. And then the second one is just going to kind of rise up to it. All right, so I'm going to put down like a little four bar loop uh, just so you can hear. And I'm going to use the glide method. So this is the loop that I put together with the glide system. And as you can see, it's got those nice, sweet, buttery glides. Check it out. Right? That's pretty nice. Let's move on to the second method. So for this one, we're going to use a plugin called Sampler. Um, and it's very similar to Simpler, really. Um, but this time, we're going to focus, instead of gliding the notes, we're going to focus on pitch bends, um, which gives you a totally different result it could be cool, it depends on the situation. So I'm gonna show you a little example. We're gonna pull up the same 808, same distortion. We're gonna make sure it's mono. 
Um, what else do we want to do? Oh, yeah, we want to go into the MIDI controls, MIDI settings or whatever, and we want to put the pitch band range as far as it can go. In this case, 24 semitones. So we actually have two octaves of like movement. So we're going to go from here all the way up to here or down, right? Uh, so we want to have a nice range of movement so we can have a lot of freedom with it. So I'm going to copy over this exact same part. I'm going to get rid of the glides that are there. I'm going to try to recreate some of them um, using pitch bends. So this time we don't want to write the notes up there. We want the, the notes, like the low notes to be like as long as they can be. So I'm going to have them all going like this. In sampler we want to do the same thing. This time it's under filter or global. We want to go find our voices settings and put it to one for the same reason as before. So let's go back to our automations now. Right here. All right. So the hard part about this method is getting the right pitches because they're always going to be a little flat. Like you got to be real careful with pitches. But once you get them, you can get these really cool like swelling effects and you can do like a lot faster glides. Um, it's kind of nice because you have a lot of control through the automation by like how much you want to raise it or, or lower it, how fast, how fast you want it to go back down. Like you can literally draw that. So it's like you have a lot more control, but it is a little bit harder to get it in tune and to get it like tight. Um, I'm going to play a little example. So as you can hear, this gives you a radically different result than the one before, but it could be used for a lot of cool things. Now the third method that I like to use um, is actually using audio and using like audio transpose. So I'm going to take the first part that we did just without the glides and I'm going to convert it to audio by doing freeze track and then by doing flatten and it's going to be a piece of audio now. Now what we can do, again this is a method that gives you a very different result, is use the transpose automation. Um, so once again, we want to go into our clip, we want to click automations down here, and we're going to find our transposition modulation. So I'm going to try to draw a little automation here, and I'll show you what I did in a second. So the, one of the pros of this method is that you do have pitch control because you can see how many semitones you're raising it by so you can make sure that it's always in tune. Um, and another pro is that you get this like really like, it could be a pro, it could be a con, it depends on what effect you're giving it. But you can get these like really glitchy things because by, by messing with the transpose and using audio, um, the, you know, the resampling algorithm kind of like creates glitches and creates like cool textures to it. Um, so yeah, if you use it, you got to be careful with it because it could turn into something like really weird, but you can get some pretty unique effects. Now I just did something real quick uh, and I'm going to play it to you. So yeah, as long as you're careful with like clippings and like not making it go like too crazy, but you can have a lot of control with this one. You can create some like really cool glitchy type effects, um, which is pretty nice. All right, these were the three methods that I used the most to do 808 glides. Uh, there's a few more, but like really with these, you can kind of cover um, everything you need and you can get really creative and like mix and match like two of them uh, and get some really interesting results. So it's up to you to like experiment, but these are three ways that you can do it. As always, if you have any questions about this or if you have different methods that you use uh, that you want to share or anything like that, uh, make sure to write it in the comments and I'll be like super happy to respond and conversate and talk about it. If you want to hit me up privately though, if you want to just want to say hi, you want to ask me something or whatever it is, you can hit me up on Ed Talenti on Instagram. It's the social media I use the most and as soon as I can, I will respond. Before you leave, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Hit that bell because you're not going to see my videos when they come up and I'm going to post a lot. My schedule right now seems to be one video, two beats. One video, two beats every week. All right, I hope you found this interesting. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way through. I'll see you guys next time and as always, be positive and positive things will happen.